No matter how you're approaching 2024, electric e-bikes can help you go the distance. From commutes to adventures, riders of all abilities can explore the new year with electric e-bikes. Explore 2024 with electric e-bikes, the most accessible and adventurous e-bikes ever. Visit electricebikes.com to learn more and be sure to mention the I Don't Know About That podcast with Jim Jeffries and send... You in the post checkout the, survey. Tell them that we sent sent you in the post checkout. Oh, this survey. is the best read I've ever done. Don't stop me now. <laughs> <laughs> That's L E C T R I C E bikes dot com. That was really good. That was really Great. Good. That was the pre roll. That was I the think, fifteen second ad. I think uh, I think you need glasses. That was the best you've ever read. No, I read, I read. Yeah. I definitely read better with glasses. Yeah, you should probably wear. We them. had a murder yeah. mystery night the other night. I couldn't. They have script bits and I can't read it. I need. I should be yeah. wearing glasses all the time. Yeah. But you're so fucking handsome, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're doing the song. Uh, 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 carpet. <laughs> Chairs. <laughs> Which holds which up. You might find out, and I don't know about that, but Jim Jeffries, we're live at Flappers, everyone. Give a rally on the drums. Yes, hello. Welcome to our uh, second live podcast. I'm here with Forrest Shaw and, and Jack Hackett. We're at Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank. The first one did very well. We did uh, Titanic, and that went down great. <laughs> I didn't prepare that. That was just fucking. I'm that good. Um, Anything happened this week? What happened this week? I don't know. I, but the hemorrhoid happened. But we we can talk that. about it again. You we can't had, talk about is that it you want to talk about? I, I wasn't referring I was at, to that. But I was at my kids. It. I was at my kids' baseball game this week, <laughs> and uh, I was at the practice, and I was helping. Well, I'm not very good at the sports, right? The other dads are all throwing the balls and going, "Johnny, stay in the box," and all that. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. So what I do is. <laughs> I act like a ball boy. I just go around and gather all the misfit balls and put them back in the bucket so I'm useful. So I've been walking around a lot. Now, previously that day, I had had a hemorrhoid burst when I was having a shit. And, and it, had, it, it had ruined the, it had ruined the, uh, the bathroom, this thing. And I went out a shower. I pushed back in what I thought I'd pushed back in. Then I went to... Now... When you shit yourself, which I didn't, when you shit yourself, you get a little alarm that something bad's happened. In the form of a smell, you go, oh, oh, I better run to safety. But when a hemorrhoid pops and you lose about a quarter of a pint of blood and your pants look like a Japanese flag, there's no... You, you don't want to show them, do you? You can show the picture. Oh, really? You want to? Because yeah, because I, I a... only if I don't show the general public, but show the people in the room, so the listeners can go, "Oh my god!" Just oh in my just god. in this room? Yeah, just this room. I don't want the world to see. Uh, you, so just my phone? Yeah, just your phone. That's those are the. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we apologize to everyone eating. Yeah. yeah. Now. I was I was at the I, no, I, I was at the Clippers Lakers game and I just get I had a hemorrhoid pop and blood all over my pants at Hank's baseball practice. I go, was it showing? And then that picture just popped up. <laughs> <laughs> it says, you tell me. <laughs> I just wanted an honest opinion because maybe maybe no one noticed. Uh, well, that but that it. happened last week. I had to go to my son's baseball game this afternoon and just see all the dads like this. Hey. <laughs> Because no one said anything, so I can't be the one to bring it up. I can't walk up to one of the dads and go, the other day we were at practice, did you notice anything different about me? In the downstairs, no, so I, they all know, I know, they know that I know, I know that they know, and we all have to just stare at each other. I had a lot of blood pouring out of my anus one day. Oh, you practice. felt better. You said you felt better. Oh, man, it was yeah. a relief. If anyone's ever had a hemorrhoid that was really fucking thing and then it pops, whoo! Yeah, That's so. like putting on tight shoes and taking them off again. Fantastic. <laughs> Most people are getting their food right now, by the way, too, so that's pretty good timing, I think. Guys right, enjoying so, that pizza? So we're, we're ready to... Should we pr promote some gigs we're doing? Because people sure, actually have yeah. to hear the gigs. Yeah. Do the gigs. Um, where are you going to be? Des Moines, Iowa? 
I'm sure. <laughs> this is my life. I look at one week ahead of my life. <laughs> I let everyone else do things around me, and then I look. I look one week ahead, and I go like this. And I go, where am I going this week? <sighs> oh yeah. And we're not promoting it for you. Other people will be listening to this, obviously. Des Moines. Des Moines to, was a great to, crowd, to but that theatre. Has a fucking bat in it. Yeah. And if they haven't caught that fucking bat. Tell the bat story. Ah, oh, the fucking. There's a bat. I'm sure I've, t- I've told this story before. In Des Moines, Iowa, the same fucking theatre, there's, there's your audience. I'm performing, everything's going okay, and then the audience goes, oh! Like that. Because that's what everyone does when they see a bat come out of nowhere. So he's back came out and started flapping around and I said this to the audience just ignore it <laughs> and I'll keep telling jokes and we'll, we'll be fine I did that for a while I did as much material as I could with the fucking bat I tried doing it the audience couldn't focus I went we, we, can't, we have to stop the show until the fucking back goes away. I'm really sorry. No, then they put the, they so, close no, the curtain. Yeah, yeah, I said, yeah. I said, I had to go up to him and said, come here, shut the curtain, right? I'll perform on the little bit in the front of the curtain. You can keep the bats contained, <laughs> right? <laughs> with, with the, behind the fucking curtain, right? And they said, good idea, Jim. And then they shut the curtain and I went back to doing the gig. The gig was going fine. But it sounded like the Three Stooges were doing a fucking a job behind me. There was things smashing and cracking and fucking people fall. I think I heard a knock, 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 right? So, so, so this guy comes in from the back of the room and he has one of those big fucking butterfly nets. You know the ones with the big stick with a hoop on the end with a really long fucking net to catch butterflies but a bit bigger. One that has obviously been custom made to catch bats. And this guy runs in and he goes, sorry Jim this has never happened before. So come out if you want to see the bats in Des Moines, Iowa, March 22nd. Uh, I, I told that story somewhere and someone wrote from the theater and said, there's still bats. Oh, yeah. That, that's an old building with yeah, chimneys. Yeah, it's yeah, not going away. Um, March 23rd, Kansas City, Missouri. Then you're in South Africa, Spokane, Washington, Denver, Colorado, and so on. Go to jimjeffries.com. And uh, come see me, too. I'll be in Sydney, Australia on um, April 24th and 26th. Oh, if you're listening in um, Melbourne, Australia, there'll be some secret gigs coming up that me and Forrest are going to be performing on in April. So that's yeah. worth looking at. And if you're here at Flappers, you're probably not going to these gigs, but thanks for coming out. <laughs> it's a long flight. Um, IDCAP yeah, podcast on listen. Instagram. And what's that? Challenge accepted. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Come right. on down. Right. Yeah, Tickets link on my website. Come on. Uh, Jack, you want to uh, promote anything? Uh, check out my band, The Doohickeys. <laughs> Great promoter. It's really uh, not the noise you make for The Doohickeys. <laughs> where do they find you? <laughs> huh? Where do they find you? Instagram, the.doohickeys, or go to the, the, the doohickeysband.com. <laughs> they're, good to, they're, they're good to do hickeys. The doohickeys open for me at the Ryman Theatre, which is the Grand Old Opry. Damn right. Something to people in the South. Um, and they open there. Fucking people love the doohickeys. Yeah, we can start them. Oh, okay. Uh, you want to interest our? We want to interest our guests? Or you, you, you can do it. You, you do it's, your, it's your job. When do you want to do this? Ad? We don't normally read the ads here, but oh, we're do read the ad at the end. Okay, yeah, we'll, cool. do, we'll do the ad. It's a funny end. one. All right. Um, our guest is. She's been on the show more than any other guest. This will be her fourth time. Uh, we love her. Please welcome Don Brody. <laughs> Come on, give her a rally on the drums. In comes Dawn. Oh, she's a likely lad. Here we go. Very excited to have you back on. You did, uh, Dawn did our um, uh, Titanic podcast. Have yeah. you heard that one live? Also, Frankenstein, which is one of my favourite podcasts we ever did. I still haven't read Frankenstein. You gave me, you gave me the book. And it was really nice. You gave it to me. Trunk. I with, saw you it gave that. it to me with the idea that I've read books before, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I couldn't let you down in person. I was like, I've read two books. Uh, one of them was Back to the Future Two, 
the novelisation of when oh, I was... Yeah, okay, okay. Because what happened was in Australia, it used to take a very long time before we got movies. Americans would watch movies and then the canisters would sit there and then eventually they would get down to Australia. And there'd be always one cunt of a kid who had gone on holiday to fucking America and comes back like this and he's like, Luke Skywalker has a green lightsaber. And you're like, cunt, right? <laughs> I'll find that out in four months. <laughs> right? So I didn't want to wait four months to see Back to the Future 2, so they had a book of Back to the Future 2, and I read that. Also, about seven years ago, for whatever reason, I read Chevy Chase's biography. <laughs> seven years ago? About that. Oh, okay. it, was, it, was, it took two years, but I got through the fucking what thing. What was your big takeaway? Yeah, you know, me... His mum and my mum were very similar people. <laughs> and he seemed a bit grumpy. <laughs> um, well, thanks for being here, Don. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is thank you for the gift of Frankenstein the book, but it's on my list of things to read. It's in good company on your bookshelf, clearly. Wow. No, 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 no. I have so it's many in the fucking... Trunk of his car, I have so many... I have so many... That's what he's going to read it, yeah. So it's good. So when I, the uh, earthquake, you're no, trapped was, under rubble, you'll It was such a kids. sweet gift, and I look at it every day, and I think to myself, I'm going to read that. <laughs> yeah, he gave me a ride home from the podcast the other day, and I knew you were going to be on this podcast, and I put my stuff in the trunk, I'm like, oh, there's the book Don gave him. That's, <laughs> I'll read that someday. But yeah, you see it in the trunk. I did, yeah, I don't read. It's nothing against you, personally. All right, well, we're not doing Frankenstein I don't, today. I don't like people who do read. I find them to be pretentious. <laughs> Sorry, Don. <I'm... laughs> we're not don't doing... Don't you, when you find some cunt and you're like, you're like, you watch a movie and you go, you like the movie, the book was way better. <laughs> Fuck off. What are, you, what are you talking about? You, you read the word dragon. I saw a fucking dragon. <laughs> There's no way! There's no way that what you read was better. No fucking way! How did Back to the Future 2 stand up when you finally saw it? Uh, well, you read it in the book and you picture it a flying car. You picture it, but you don't see the fuck. You didn't see a car going up like this. You don't see the fucking wheels doing that. Yeah, it blew my fucking mind when I saw it. <laughs> Also, I'm, I'm very dyslexic, so every character in a book that I read is a simpleton. Every character is walking around like this. Hey, Doc! Where's the DeLorean? So it's just not enjoyable for me. Movies, am I right? All right, okay. so what, uh, what's Dawn here to talk about today? Okay, right? uh, Dawn, so Dawn knows... No, we, have, we have a little song. I don't know if you know oh, okay. this podcast. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Judging a book by its cover. We didn't spare on the font. <laughs> Glad we trademarked that. <laughs> what we did... We, they, trademark should trademark that font because it's the same font. <laughs> Fucking hell, Jack. You've had all day. I gave you one job. All right. Um, is it cave paintings? Um, all right. So, uh, are you like books? You're, you're a person of... Very pretentious. Uh, you're a person of literature and history. You have told us about Frankenstein. We've learned about the fun Dracula. I remember Dracula was written on the same day as you Frankenstein. Remember? It's one of my favourite <laughs> things in the world. That he class. tells it to a lot of people. I tell it to everyone. It makes me seem interesting. <laughs> Because you're in you a little bit autistic, it's good to have things like that to just throw at people. <laughs> um, Jack has a hint. Oh, okay. Paper aeroplane. Or maybe that's what Jack thought was an actual fucking plane that you built. Because the font and that was both. Yeah, you were supposed okay. to fly it around for a while. Oh, and then it hits it in the water? And then it, yeah, and, that, and then it went off. He's too oh. busy making fun of me. Oh, 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 oh. Amelia Earhart. <laughs> That's it. You got it. <laughs> That's fucking easy. Well, how many more clues did you have? Well, no, you were supposed it. to fly it around, and then you were supposed to say some bullshit about airplanes, 
and then crash it, but he just panicked. He started making fun of my fire. Fire. Yeah. <laughs> the, the pro- I'm not going to know a lot about this because this isn't one of the books I've read. <laughs> And I haven't even watched. I haven't even watched the documentary on it. I don't know a lot about Amelia Earhart. Well, I'm, we're going to learn. I'm kind of fucked. Do. I'm going to assume she had a pronoun or two. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's start that. Uh, Don Brody has a degree. Is that in bad? I don't know. Am I just judging a haircut? What's going on? <laughs> Just keep throwing gas on it. Do it, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people have been writing. The podcast was better when Kelly was here because she kept me in check, and now I've been let loose into the wild. <laughs> Say hi, Kelly. Kelly's over Kelly's there. Kelly's over there. Oh, she came to work, Yep, yep. Um, Don Brody has a degree in history and theater from the University of Minnesota, and is a researcher for several museums. She has appeared on the History Channel series. Crazy Rich Ancients and History's Greatest Mysteries. Come on, that's not. Okay, History's, History's, History's Greatest, Greatest Mysteries. Mysteries. See her on this current season, new episodes every Monday, and she also has a great podcast called Hilf History. I'd like to fuck. Check that out. It's a really fun podcast. And on Instagram, find her at Don underscore Brody and at Hilf Podcast. Thanks for being here again. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Really listen to that podcast. If you, if you like history and like learning about all sorts of cool things, it's a great podcast. I'm, I'm on an episode. It's true. Up. You're the next new episode is first. Oh, I yeah. feel like our podcast is like the, the boy band of podcasts. Like, <laughs> and you just said, if you're interested in history, listen to that, right? And our podcast is like, uh, you know, shit. Like, you learn. <laughs> you learn. If you want to learn bit. this much... <laughs> Come to our show. <laughs> and maybe that'll get you into learning. <laughs> it's like boy bands. It'll get you into music, then you'll buy some good albums eventually, right? Come to us to learn one thing. It's a gateway podcast. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're a joint being handed around a party. Um, I'm going to You're ask... a crack den. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the crack dog. I'm going to ask Jim a series of questions about Amelia Earhart, and at the end of him answering his questions, Don, you're going to grade him on his accuracy, 0 through 10. Uh, Jack is going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to grade him on how hungry I am, and then we're going to add all those scores together, and uh, if you score 21 through 30, you're a mouth kidney. A mouth kidney? This is another puzzle. Do you get it? No. Earhart. Oh, okay. You, get, you hear the you had all day as well. <laughs> Fuck, yeah, no. 11 through 20, eyes spleen. 0 through 10, nose colon. I think that's what you want to know. Now it's funny? Fuck you guys. <laughs> it's just yeah, you, they'll do it you were ahead of your time, man. <laughs> Look, I got, as I got a begin with, they thought it was shit. And their history has proven different. They love that joke. This is the worst part of the podcast for me, is making these these categories. I hate it. Yeah. We're not having a picnic over here hearing him. <laughs> hey, uh, no scoring was pretty good. That's why I saved it for last. <laughs> All right, first question. Uh, the Wright brothers flew the first plane in 1903. How old was Amelia Earhart at the time? Oh. You can see it up there. Yeah, no, I can see Yeah, I'm reading it. Okay. <laughs> it's up here. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fucking game show host. I know how to do this. All right, my ladies flew the first plane in 1903. How old was Amelia Earhart at the time? Now, I got to look. And your clock that, starts now. How old was she in that picture? And then I'll tell you. I'll work backwards. I don't know. I have no clue, yeah. Yeah, because she could have been anything from 90 to 70. They looked old back then. <laughs> No yeah. one knew what anyone's age was. <laughs> um, so in 1903, how old was uh, she? She would have been eight years old, I reckon. Okay. When and why did Amelia Earhart first get into a plane? Well, to get over there. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever over there may be, but there was a reason for it. Yeah. We have to get there quicker than walking. <laughs> Come with me, Amelia. <laughs> it's imperative. <laughs> That's so, your answer? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, she, uh, had to, she had to get a distance uh, who, in, in, a, in a short amount of time. Who was Amelia Earhart's first flight instructor? Uh, um, one of the Wright brothers. I'll say um, Orville. Orville? Okay. 
Orville at that stage would have been about 60 something years old he used to show up he used to look at Amelia and go I'm getting too old for this shit <laughs> back in my day women wouldn't be flying who was the other right and we're like fucking hell yeah. Orville calm the fuck down and some people were like he's of that age they have opinions <laughs> Uh, all right, Amelia worked several odd jobs to save up for her first plane. What was one of her jobs? Uh, odd jobs? Yeah. Oh, so it had to be something odd. Uh, she used to, <laughs> we used to walk around with a camel head on and take photos with people. It was yeah. one odd job. Um, one of them. No, okay. Uh, what, did, what did she do as an odd job? She, I'll say she was a waitress. Uh-huh. And I'll say she also worked in uh, a chocolate factory. Like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> <laughs> he worked as a waiter. Yeah. I don't even want to ask this. I went two question. steps forward on that joke. Was... <laughs> we'll ask it. Um, I already know what you're going to say. Amelia buys her first plane in 1921. Describe it. 1921. Describe she was day on. Well, she was eight years old in 1908. Fuck, I think I nailed that. Uh, uh, buys buys her first plane in 1921 describe it hey there mister (laughs) this is crazy (laughs) what I've been working a lot as a waitress and doing work with camel heads and taking photos with cunts and I can say cunts because I'm advanced for my time He's describing her buying it on yeah. the plane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I buy that plane? <laughs> <laughs> and then he would have gone, well, a little filly. Uh, shouldn't your husband been helping you do this? And she's like, fuck you. I'm a millionaire hut. And then he's like, I don't give a fuck. Just give me the money. Oh, yeah. And then she bought the plane. That was very confident. That's, yeah. he just, I described it perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and the plane if you want me to describe the plane sure yeah, two that. wings <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Many, not one of those old planes that they try it out you know those planes where they put fucking 20 wings on top of each other <laughs> and they push it down the runway the one with the 20 wings and even even like you see it as a ba- child I'm showing it to my two year old and he's like no <laughs> No, but some fucking prick back then went, well, if, if two wings is good, imagine 20. Anyway, so it wasn't one of those. It would have been split wing, so that was four wings, Red Baron style. Okay. She, probably, she probably painted... Uh, uh, A.E. on the wing or something. What for? To get laid. Because there's no point being famous if people don't fucking know. So, Where did Amelia fly her first plane? What did she use it for? Get over there. No, no, don't answer that. (laughs) Where where did she fly her first plane? What did she she use it for? I don't even know where where she was fucking from, mate. (laughs) I don't know if she was British, American or fucking Colombian. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I've got to figure this out. I'm I'm going to suspect (laughs) that Amelia is an American. Yes. Do you want to know why? Because her name's a bit dumb. <laughs> right? If she was British, she'd be fucking Amy. Amy Mill. Yeah, that's all she'd be. Not Amelia. So she's American. American. Kansas. Hey, you shouldn't have told me now I know too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I could pass a whole fucking exam with this much knowledge. <laughs> She had to learn to fly because of the constant twisters and the weather patterns that only exists <laughs> in motherfucking Kansas. So okay. she had to fly because of those things, right? So the first time she used it was to get away from a twister. 
down to Daytona Beach, Florida. <laughs> Spring break, baby. <laughs> Where Amelia, their heart was just fucking topless and getting beats. I don't even know what happens down there. He's going to have a really good score. I really Crazy. I should have gotten a bigger pencil. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many questions left. I just, keep going. Yeah, we keep yeah, going. Yeah, hey, yeah, look. Yeah. People paid to be here. Okay, we got to give them. My answer. answers come to life in front of a crowd. It turns out that you people aren't, you two aren't receptive enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd put Amelia. more effort into the normal one if I knew it, I'd get laughs. But <laughs> Amelia, Amelia breaks her first flying record in October of 1922. What was it? Uh, it was probably a speed record as she smashed into the water. <laughs> so I'm going to go, it's the speed record. <laughs> as she okay. fucking smashed into the water. Got it. Got it. Um, and then why did she become internationally famous? What was the incident? Or the... Same thing. Yeah, it's similar <laughs> thing answer? to the first answer. <laughs> but she was the first woman to fly I'm going to say the Atlantic across the Atlantic across the Atlantic she was okay. the first woman to fly across the Atlantic she was going to go land there in England probably London she wouldn't have gone into the north it scared them back then <laughs> <laughs> the no. northern England would have thought that was a fucking UFO like oh, why I man this fucking this fucking thing <laughs> With a lady's head sticking out the top of it. <laughs> it was fucking coming at me like. All right. I um, saw it in a puddle. It was underground as well. <laughs> but, okay, so one of the things. Don't fast forward, Jack. Don't let him bully you around. No, no. I answer all the I, fucking I was questions. You had a picture. No. Mm. Uh, one of the things the newspapers um, always mentioned was Amelia Earhart's uncanny resemblance to whom? And here's a picture again if you need to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> what did she look like? Yeah. Uh, her, I was going to say her sister. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say her sister, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tammy Earhart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of the greatest bridge players of all time. <laughs> But overshadowed by her sister. What's her name? <laughs> fucking bridge. <laughs> yeah. Back then, well, there's no fucking telly, man. Ah, uh, yeah. To good... be a good bridge player was fucking a thing that people. It was. It was like being the best at pod. No, no, no. I was. I was. I thought it was a good pool. Thought it was a good answer. Yeah. She's also good at that game with the ball on the wooden. St- <laughs> <laughs> you go, I've got one of these. It's got a scoop on the end and a ball, oh, yeah, a yeah. wooden ball and a stick. And I stand in front of my two-year-old like I'm from the 1920s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best in the house at it. The wooden scoop. Um, I also have a stick that I roll down the hill when I play catch the can. I'm very old. <laughs> This top of this ad read says, Host Adlib, how you are moving into 2024. Are you tiptoeing in or ready to hit the throttle? I can ad-lib this. (laughs) Yeah, start over. Go right now. Man. How's your 2024? No, 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 you don't ask me. I just... Hey, Forrest. Man, 2024, what is it? Like, March? (laughs) Yeah. It is... I'm coming in full throttle. Do you, want to know, <laughs> do you want to know how I'm coming in full throttle? Yeah. Because of electric e-bikes. Yep. No matter how you're approaching 2024, electric e-bikes can help you go the distance from commutes to adventures. If you're here and you want to go there with less energy than a fucking pedal bike, you're going to want an electric e-bike. You... I'm, It's the great middle point between a bike and a motorbike. I'm telling you, I've got one. They sent me one. It's changed everything. I got one too. It's awesome. Forrest rides around with his... Uh Forrest rides around with his dog strapped onto his back. Yeah. There's Ernie. Uh It. Ar- Arnie. Arnie has no bottom half. 
It's just that bit. Two legs and a body. His bottom half was cut off. <laughs> he, he looks very cute in this, but out in the wild, just scratching along his his amputee belly. He, uh, he doesn't yeah. even have a hold of shit. It's very tragic. I got at the bottom of the back. The shit. I got a hole cut there. It's nice. From commutes to adventures, riders of all abilities can explore the new year with electric e-bikes. Go to electricebikes.com to learn more about their wide selection of e-bikes that start at just $7.99 with the XP Lite. That's electric, L-E-C-T-R-I-C, ebikes.com. Ah, uh, we just did personal endorsement. So you yeah, we are doing another person, we say another person endorsement. Um, I, I went to the shops in it the other day. <laughs> Way faster than walking. Keller. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's not real. It is, no, the, it, I'll be honest. It is, no, it, it, it is, it is the easiest r- what ride in the world. Like, what I could have done with one of these as a kid. Yeah, you pedal like this fast and then you're going 20 miles an hour. So yeah. yeah, it's great. It's, We're helmet. It's good. Forrest is riding again. E bikes. <laughs> We've done it already. Right. Uh, anyone can ride. You th- Look at Forrest. He rides. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? <laughs> You're old. Old people don't do uh, things. Okay. I, I do because I'm, I'm young and Wearing dynamic and I don't need glasses. <laughs> Durable features and accessories and added safety, convenience and control. Save on gas, parking and maintenance. Financing as low as $49 a month. So you don't need to have $7.99. You can just have $49 a month and you'll be e-riding. Get started. On adventures is easier than ever. Shipping. Hey, I'll tell you what it costs. Nothing. Nothing. It ships for free. Hey, hey, and I know what you're thinking. How do I assemble it? You don't have to. It's already assembled. And foldable and easy for storage. As long as you have that much space, you're good to go. <laughs> Some safety regulations and road access are for regular bikes. Mm, in most, in oh, most yeah. states, licences, registrations and inspection are not required, but check the laws in your area. Just go to the call to action at the end. Yeah, yeah. Add more physical activity to your everyday life. Run errands, uh, make commuting more enjoyable, or expand your weekend horizons with up to how many miles do you reckon you get on one charge? Probably 15 miles. And that's what it says here. 50, uh, what? <laughs> 150 miles in one charge. That's Electric's unbeatable long-range options. Explore 2024 with Electric Bikes, the most accessible and adventurous e-bikes ever. Visit electricbikes.com to learn more and to be sure to mention that I don't know about about that podcast with Jim oh, Jeffries <laughs> wow. send you sent you in the post checkout survey <laughs> this what is real I, what did I say is that what I said yeah, did I say that correctly yeah, no, did that make got sense did I emphasize the right words in the right places you did great don't worry yeah, about it, it. keep there going one <laughs> sentence left okay that's out. electric L-E-C T-R-I-C e-bikes Dot com. <laughs> Carry on. So Amelia endorses and appears in ads for a number of products. One gets her in trouble and stirred controversy. What was the product? Yeah, what was it? Well, so I, I was gonna, I'm not saying this to be funny, but like sanitary pad ads <laughs> probably didn't exist at all. And we probably just ignored that as a thing. <laughs> like we probably sold them in some room up the back. <laughs> But I'm going to say sanitary pads, man. Okay. Uh, when Amelia, uh, now an international celebrity, first flew across the U.S., she discovered a new hazard on America's runways. What was it? Uh, uh, now that answer will get me in trouble. <laughs> no, 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 no. Everything will get cancelled. You, the podcast. <laughs> I like the audience to say it. It was on the runway. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter for us what I was going to say. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, she got, <laughs> my mind's blank. Uh, she discovered a new hazard on America's runways. What was it? I'm going to say birds. 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 Uh, was Pigeons. She, was she ever married? 
I don't know if it was legal back then. Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I voted for it. I voted for it. Don't get into me. I fucking campaigned for it. Big fan. Everyone should be miserable. All of us. Uh, but I'll say yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, where did Amelia Earhart land at the end of her transatlantic solo flight? Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, she landed in London. In the water. And then... <laughs> yeah, it's always raining there, am I right? <laughs> okay, and then the second part of the question, who were the first people to see her? Uh, diving crew? <laughs> I feel like she had a couple successful flights, otherwise... Oh, yeah. I mean, she had the successful one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is her first one, then. Yeah, yeah. Who were the first people to see her? I'll say it was the, the king and... It would have been back then, it would have been the king. We'll say the king and queen. The king, king and queen were there. That would have been fucking... There's Birdie, but that would have been before... That would have been... Oh, that would have been before... Birdie would have still been alive. The stuttering, the King's Speech cut, that cut was there. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> an Australian bloke came in and went, I'll teach you how to talk, cunt. <laughs> and then he was like, I gotta do good, you fucking. It's a brilliant movie. <laughs> The transatlantic solo flight was not easy and she almost didn't make it. What were some of her challenges during the crossing? That first bit sounds like a lyric from Journey. <laughs> <laughs> I can't she do the voice. Didn't make it. The transatlantic solo flight was easy. Um, what were some of her challenges yeah. during crossing? Yeah. I'm going to say Birds. she was mildly dyslexic. <laughs> And at times the gauges switch back. Also, she had a spot of attention deficit disorder, which was very obvious at the end of her life. All right, Amelia Earhart made a little money flying and a lot of money endorsing products, but she made most of her money how? Don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we all do it. Like, in some way or another. Um, uh, what a money how? Uh, product made my, so she, did she like endorse yeah. products like no, infomercials no, no, no. or just she like made a little straight bit up? flying, some, some endorsing products, but she made most of her money this other way. Oh, uh, gardening. Gardening. Yeah. <laughs> well, what else did people have back then? That's your only possession, <laughs> is your fucking garden. Everything else is just a room. Unless she was in construction, she was in fucking gardening, man. That's what everyone was in. <laughs> or tailoring. How do you make money gardening? You people need a gardener. Oh, doing the, I thought you meant in her. Okay, I have, uh, I have uh, them. I have a gardener. <laughs> maybe. I, I don't want to seem out of touch, but maybe she was a pool guy. <laughs> That'd be cool, yeah. All right, what was Amelia Earhart attempting to do when she was lost? Now this is the question. What, what was she attempting to do when, when she, was, she lost? was lost? Yeah, this is, yeah, when she actually... Uh, yeah. uh, texting her husband that he'd done something wrong. <laughs> How far into her journey was we? Was she when she was lost? I am joking. I, I know there were no mobile phones back then, so I know that didn't happen. But the feeling remains. How far into her journey was she when she was lost? Oh, only only about. Oh, uh, she was about a three hour, uh, two hour. <laughs> She would have been... The weather started getting rough. <laughs> you know, it would be three hours. Times, times by aeroplanes were slow. 
70, 70 miles an hour. <laughs> she was mouth. fucking at 2,100 miles out fucking from her journey. Wait, you think 70 times 3 is 2,100? Seven, 70 times 3. 210. Is that your answer? Too? All right, two, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, all right, give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. It, 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 that's, you fucking proved me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Couple more questions. All right, what was unusual or difficult about where she was attempting to land? Uh, probably understanding the thick accent. Because <laughs> people didn't travel much back then. Yeah. So when she lands there and the king comes up, and she's like, he's like, and they're like, <laughs> she's like, was that a word? <laughs> it was very challenging for her. All right. Um, when her plane vanished, Amelia Earhart was not alone. Who was with her? The hearts and minds of <laughs> any child who'd ever dreamt to dream. To dream. Okay. The hearts and minds of children everywhere? Sure. Yeah. yeah. And Rock Hudson. <laughs> oh. wow. It's true, we don't know where he went. Yeah. We we know well, where I've... Rock Hudson went. Uh. His, his death was quite famous, Jack. <laughs> don't worry, you're fine. <laughs> Alright, last question. A popular conspiracy. Because you get it from fucking and Jack doesn't. Oh. <laughs> A popular conspiracy Sorry, theory Jack. suggested that Amelia Earhart didn't die but was captured by the Japanese. Who was the first to suggest this theory? The Chinese, probably. <laughs> yeah, so. Those two have never gotten along historically, so I reckon they probably put the rumour out there. <laughs> it's where we get the term Chinese whispers. We don't know that in this country. I know, but people in yeah. Australia are laughing their ass off yeah. right now. <laughs> in the rest of the world, you know the game Telephone? Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere else in the world calls that Chinese whispers. I, 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 I understand that it has to be racist. <laughs> I'm just not sure how. Yeah, I don't know how either. But, um, but every time I say it in front of Americans, I get real bad looks. <laughs> <laughs> and then they try to repeat it to their friend and they say it wrong. And then they try to repeat it to someone and they say it wrong. And then they try to repeat it to someone. And then it comes back to me and they're like, it's fucking telephone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Don, how did Jim do on his knowledge of Amelia Earhart? Zero through ten, ten's the best. I know I'm <clears throat> not the one who judges on confidence, but he was very confident. Thank you, I'm a little um, high. Which is good because <laughs> it was it was it was factually pretty terrible. It, it was it was it was historically I mean, I, I never know exactly what number to give. I know I should be more the, prepared. The, the real Super one. important. The, I, the number, yeah. but I, I knew, knew, if it was a I test. knew lady, dead, Atlantic. <laughs> yeah. What a fucking... Yeah. I nailed that. Rock Hudson. There's some you did... You did... Can I tell you one you did? The first one? Yeah. The first question, how old was she? Yeah. You were really, really close. Boom. <laughs> yeah. You were really close. The rest of them were horseshit. Well, what, was, what was the first one? What was the first answer? Oh, we got to get the score first. Fuck. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, but I am, I am also a teacher who slugs whiskey throughout <laughs> the exam, so I can be generous. I, I'm, this is a solid D. Oh. And Ds get degrees. Uh, that's, the, that, that's better than anything I got in fucking high school, man. Yeah, that's a D. I'm happy with that. It's we need a number. Generous. Down. All right, let's go. Zero and through you ten. Need a, yeah. Zero through ten. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Three and a half. Three and a half. How, how confident was he, Jack? He lost me at one point because one question goes, I don't know. But then, when you were challenged on your math, you said, I don't give a fuck. Mm. <laughs> so, ten. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's going out that's to good. all the kids out there who feel, who feel stupid in school, right? I'm there with you, all the way. The other kids will turn to you and say, that's wildly wrong. And you know what? You look them in the eye and you say, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That'll get you through so many awkward situations in your life. People get so fucking startled 
<laughs> when you just look him in the eye and go, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> we were startled. <laughs> I've noticed that this is something, okay, for all the, the British and Australian people who are listening and our South African friends. Um, for all of you, right now we're in a comedy club and only in America, we're in a comedy club, people buy cookies and milk. <laughs> The, the rest of the world is getting fucking hammered drunk. <laughs> hammered drunk. And you've got these tables that say two drink minimum. But no one has a two cookie minimum. They know you'll fucking buy them. <laughs> They're fresh baked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm looking at it like it's really? fucking good. But, you know, you know why you have the problem you have, America. <laughs> Don't go, don't fucking go, we, we can't figure it out. It's cookies at comedy. That's what it is, people. I want one really bad, but can I have it afterwards? Otherwise, people hate hearing me eat during the podcast. I've done it before. It's very upsetting to people. Uh, so that's 13 and a half points. Uh, I'm not that hungry, so like minus four. Uh, so you're a nose colon. There you go. Um, nose colon. Yeah, very good. Congratulations. Okay. Nose colon. So how old was she when the Wright brothers flew the first plane in 1903? Jim said eight. She was six. Mm. Yeah, but the life was harder back then. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if, she, if she would have looked like an eight. She looked like a day over eight. <laughs> <laughs> With her rickets and... Yeah. <laughs> What are rickets? I don't know. Yeah, Back yeah, yeah. in the day, Emilio I had, had polio and, and rickets and shit. Yeah, I have no clue what rickets are. That's it the thing. Like Nothing that. makes me sound older in this world, right, <laughs> than this sentence. My mother had polio. <laughs> as soon as I say that, younger women look at me like I'm in black and white and all fuzzy. <laughs> My wife can't get over it. She tells her friends. She's like, his mum had polio. <laughs> like, how old is this cunt you live with? Anyway. The warning signs of rickets. Do you know what that one? Is that it is? arthritis? Is it just another bad. Arthritis? Bone fractures, Ew. stunted growth, pain Ew. or tenderness. That's why she had to get in the plane. Uh, <laughs> teeth deformities. Don't get rickets. Yikes. All right. Everyone, everyone moving forward in your life, don't get rickets. <laughs> Of course, I'm only speaking to the unvaccinated people in this room. <laughs> Political, I don't am know I? How you get rickets? How do you think you get rickets? Oh, um, uh, leaving things, meat in your backyard. Lack of nutrition. Lack of vitamin D or calcium is the most common is cause it, of rickets. It's related to scurvy. Oh, I eat lots of cheese. <laughs> I shouldn't I shit myself every time but I do no rickets when and why did Amelia Earhart first get into a plane uh, you said it was quicker than walking that didn't get me a fucking point it did not no <laughs> the... like I give a fuck <laughs> Well, planes were new. Plane, the 1903 Wright Brothers flight was the first flight. But then World War I, of course, people got real accustomed to planes awfully fast. And then when the war was over, we didn't think we'd need planes again. And so they were just sort of... What when do you say we? Things? Who is we? We is, generally speaking, the lowercase italics American public. The government wasn't stashing what, them. What did the Australians think? I'll get back to you. We would have, we would have been well into planes. Very exciting. But people were. We didn't have planes. fucking roads. Right. Well, that was exactly it. We would have been over the moon. Very excited. They miscalculated. I went to Brisbane. <laughs> it was so different. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. The temperature change alone. Uh, so, they were anyway, doing air shows. They were I trying just, to show off what these planes could do to the general public. So. Her first, she saw a plane for the first time in Long Beach when her dad took her to an air show. And it was nuts, like people walking on the wings and stuff like that to like get people excited about airplanes so that we can do something with all these fucking things. <laughs> and she, apparently a plane dive bombed her to scare her and then like pulled away last minute and she just sort of stood there mesmerized and was like, these are fucking great. Mm. And her dad got her a flight lesson the next day 
uh, off of Wilshire. How old was she then? How old was she at this event? She was 19. 19. Mm. Oh, right here, you're saying? Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of local. Oh, she's here. from she's from L.A. She had a house in Toluca Lake. Yeah. She, yeah. All right. Yeah, she had a house Toluca less Lake than five represents. Oh, yeah. she's from Kansas. <laughs> she, was, she was born and raised in Kansas. Yeah. Her family moved all over the place. Uh, but uh, Plains and Hollywood Man hit in the 20s in L.A. at the same time. So, you want to buy a plane? Hey. That's, right, that's the voice I should have yeah. used. Yeah. Yeah, when first, did people speak like this and then they stopped? The first sound uh, in film was in 1927, and that was the same year that Charles Lindbergh flew the Atlantic. Uh, Lenny. Lenny. Who was I mean, Who was he again? Charles Lindbergh. <laughs> Charles Lindbergh was... Like, the, you think I fucking know who he was? <laughs> <laughs> Charles Lindbergh was the first uh, man person to fly across the Atlantic. At least my lack of knowledge isn't sexist. It's not. That's good. <laughs> I forget everyone equally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so who was Amelia Earhart's first flight instructor? He said Orville of the Wright Brothers. Yeah, that was a point. No. No. Uh, <laughs> what's cool is that her first flight instructor was also a woman uh, named Netta Snook, and she was this badass Snooky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, her dad took her to this place, and he introduced her to a male pilot, but she saw a woman and said, if I could, I'd rather learn from a woman. And uh, this woman had had it, and she thought she was just this kind of elegant tourist and said, I will teach you for a dollar a minute, which is still really expensive, but at the time yeah, it was astronomical. It's, and it's uh, like she an went up and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and they became uh, friends. No, it was a math. It's hard, hard math. <laughs> She, she, did, she, didn't do, she flew and did math at the same time. Um, Amelia worked several odd jobs to save up for her first plane. What was one of her jobs? Jim said waitress and chocolate factory. Wait a minute, I want to hear more about the woman. That Netta, she, Snook. Uh, Netta Snook. Netta Snook. I want to hear more Snooky. You know what's you know a bummer about Netta Snook is they were buddies and they flew together. Netta stopped charging her because Amelia was so good. They weren't fucking. Nobody says they were fucking. Uh, that's I know, why, that's why, fact, that's why I, I went back to it. In fact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell it the story. Tell it slowly. <laughs> like a penthouse forum magazine yeah, from the 90s. But I will say that it was a bummer Well, I never took a flight <laughs> lesson before. <laughs> but I'd never done a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, Netta quit because she got married and had babies and that was one of, ah, one of many like women that Amelia saw, man, once you start having babies, man, they don't let you fly anymore. So Netta was like her first warning. Where was Netta from? Uh, I don't know originally. I don't know. Her Did she, is she from right money or is she? They all sound like they're from money. No, I don't think she was from money because she was flying sightseeing tours around the bay and that was her money. Because anyone, uh, men, some of the men who had pilot's license, almost all of them were from the, the war. They were veterans. So women who wanted to fly had like four years to learn and, their own, and th they had to learn from these often damaged. Uh, drunk vets. Yeah, but I'm saying that's a quite an fun. expensive hobby, isn't it? They all come from wealth. There's no one coming from like the real lower class and it's like, oh, we can't afford soup today, Timmy. Yeah. Can I have some flying lessons? Yeah. <laughs> well, according well to of that course, you, I always encourage your endeavours. <laughs> Sorry to about Nettis, the rickets. According to Nettis... <laughs> According to Nettis Nook's Wikipedia page, she is from <laughs> Illinois, Mount Carroll, Illinois, and she was born February 14th, 1896. Boom. You so know she's his birthday. You know who else's birthday, birthday that is? <laughs> Robbie Williams. Oh. He's born on Valentine's Day? Yeah, he's born on the 13th. <laughs> I'm born on Valentine's Day. Yeah. So you know when you look up the different people's birthdays, you go, oh, fuck, I've got no one. I got no one in my list of famous birthdays. But I go, you're Robbie, the person. Yeah, but Robbie Williams was born on the 13th, and he was born in Britain. I was born in Australia, so it's the same day. Oh, so, no. <laughs> so I, I count him as is the same one. And that is enough now. If you're listening, and Rob, hello. <laughs> uh, all right. So the job. She had several odd jobs to save up for her first plane. What was one of her jobs? Uh, well, she three primary ones. None of them were waitressing. Ah, uh, she, she's above it, old Richie Rich. The one that was her favorite is she actually bought um, a gravel truck 
Where did you get deliver. the money to buy a gravel truck I from? Well, because First she went to work for the cunt who has the truck. Right. <laughs> she had... Until you save up a bit of money. I'll buy my own fucking truck. Stick your job up your fucking ass. I'll be hauling more gravel than you've ever fucking hauled. These blisters on my fingers weren't for nothing. She's fucking rich, Amelia. Huh? She's a rich cunt. You know she comes from a rich... No, I won't hear it, no. I'll give you that. No. No, you no, don't fucking... Fucking 20 year old just buys himself a fucking gravel truck because they, they think, hey, I'm gonna get to it. No, fucking. Daddy, can I have a gravel truck? Wow. I've already paid for 77 six hours of flight lessons. Why the fuck not? Anything else, Amelia? I'm glad she's dead. Oh. <laughs> wow. oh, I'm, not, I'm not having it. That's fair. I will, I will tell you this. You're half right. I'd give you a C on that answer, actually. Yeah. Her, her grandfather was a rich and connected judge, but oh, yeah. he cut her mother off when she married her dad. Oh. And even after they died, they refused to leave the money to Amelia's family until her father what? died. Why didn't they like to dad? What was wrong with the dad? I know we don't have time. Can you guess? Why don't no, you think, we have time. Why don't you think? Why don't you think they'd like her dad? What are reasons you don't like? He, said he was a, a race or a religion or a nationality. He was poor. So yeah. Oh, the worst of all. Oh, of the them. worst of all. <laughs> the worst of all. Oh. He was a white poor, which was the worst, and oh, he. Uh. He, the, the yeah, grandfather. Such a flip-flopper, dude. You're, oh. just, you're just yelling about Amelia being I rich. Know. No, I was impersonating <laughs> Amelia so being upset. So she had, and her poor, and he was handsome, and he was gritty, and he was, and he, when he did have a little money, he'd take her to shit like air shows, and that made her grandfather mad, so they'd cut him off again. So she could suck up to grandpa and get something, but he didn't buy anything for her, and she really had to save all of her own money for all of this. He stuff. bought her. A gravel truck. No. Uh, no. Uh, no. That was the grandfather. That no, was she right, yeah. invested some money from doing very Where dangerous things. Where did she get the initial money? <laughs> no, no, I'll give you that. She got a little bit You have to money. do a physical activity first to get the first little bit. That's true. She, she, she did have a little well, bit of money. she invested in stocks. She With truck. what? But she drove, she drove the truck and she, she delivered the gravel so herself. Down. Yeah, but she don't. Uh, We're know. going around in circles. Oh. What came first, Amelia or that other bird who oh, taught her? Right. <laughs> Are you gonna be okay? You want to move on? I'm having the best time ever. <laughs> I could do this. All. This is so. This is like more fun than stand up, really, because every joke's in a, brand new. <laughs> I'm flying by the skin of my pants. I could say something horrible at any stage. <laughs> And getting huge amounts of trouble. So she had a dump truck. Any any other jobs? Uh, she uh, was a commercial photographer, and uh, she was, oh, a, tele- yeah, she was, she was always, a telephone clerk. She was always on the gram like this, like I like your photos. Yeah. <laughs> she was a telephone clerk, but most of her money she got from the gravel truck. Telephone clerks—they were the people that just got the bit yeah. of wire and went like this, right? Yeah. I've seen movies. They go this. Where do you want to call? There you are. Mm-hmm. Connecting. That's her. Like that. <laughs> Yeah. Was there only like fifty people with phones? A handful. It's just like there's just that many holes. You got connecting, boom, and then you're connected to. But a lot of them needed gravel, maybe. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you can't even heat gravel up. All right, moving on. Amelia buys her first plane in 1921. Describe it. We know what you did. You described the whole scene. Everyone remembers that. Say it, Forrest. Repeat what you I actually, said. You got a little point for me here because you said she painted it. Yeah. And she did paint it. Swastikas, stickers, mostly. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was a different time back then. People had different opinions. No, History has been... judged her badly. <laughs> she painted it yellow and called it the canary. It was 17. Which is a crime against humanity in its yeah. own way, isn't it? <laughs> Terrible color. It had a 17 foot wingspan and 60 horsepower. Ooh, that's good. And then uh, her, in her first plane, what did she use it for? Jim said twisters to get away from twisters. Right. To get away from Daytona. fucking twisters. <laughs> Down at Toluca Lake. <laughs> so you said Daytona for some reason. I don't know why Daytona she was. Flew to Daytona. Yeah. Yeah. To go crazy. 
Because well, of the racist. Yeah, spring yeah, break, yeah. spring break. Shutter tits, yeah. Cool. I'm the, I am Farge, come on now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <man. laughs> we're, fucking, like, we're all here for fun. We try to keep it decent though, mate. <laughs> sorry, everybody. So what, uh, it wasn't Twisters, right? It wasn't, no. Oh, she, okay. uh, Took it to school. She used it as her transportation, yeah, which is why you got to look because she was today. poor. Like, everyone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so with you now. Yeah. Jim. Because so she with was you. poor, <laughs> whilst at school, after saving up to buy the gravel truck, <laughs> driving the gravel truck, buying an aeroplane, painting it yellow. Then what did she do? Oh, would she cross the Atlantic? Oh no, no, no. <laughs> Did she use it to bring medicine to people in remote areas? Oh, you'd be wrong again. She flew it to school. Because she was poor. The the student newspaper described her as the student aviatrix. Oh, bloody... uh, They wrote a fucking hit piece on me. I don't know what to talk um, Amelia break, breaks her first flying record in October of 1922. What was it? <laughs> Jim said crashed into the water. Yeah. It was it's altitude. Altitude. She was the first woman to fly to 14,000 feet. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm. I haven't got a member of my family who can spell altitude. So I, I, <laughs> I, I got to give credit where credit's due. And she, had, she almost crashed. That time, though, I'll give you that. She hit fog and had to deliberately put her plane into a tailspin so that she could pull out of it and avoid crashing. Very, very good pun. Mm. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> right till the end. Well, no. uh, why did Amelia Earhart uh, first become internationally famous? Um, you said because she crossed the Atlantic. Yeah. It's a good guess. Yeah. yeah good it was guess. a good guess, but I want to qualify it because she was the first woman to cross the Atlantic, but she wasn't flying the plane. The first time that she crossed the Atlantic, she was a passenger, and she was the first woman to ride a plane. So across did the she Atlantic. like give the other passengers drinks, or uh, no. if they if they wanted a blanket or something? Yeah. No, no, no. No, it they're was, there for safety. No, Jim, come on. it was nice. I, so it was 1928. It was mm. one year after Charles Lindbergh. That was back it. when the stewardesses were hot. Have you yeah. seen them? Have you seen them these days? Bloody hell! Back in the day, with the pillbox hat in the 60s, and the, you know, that bloody, oh, in the 60s. None of those women have retired, have they? No, not yet. <laughs> no, not yet. If, if, you, if you go on a plane, the, the original ones, still there. I gave up my seat for one of them. Oh. <laughs> I said, I'll stand. <laughs> Oh, I'm a terrible person. <laughs> uh, no, nope, supporter of women. Yep. Um, one of the things the newspapers all... Oh, you don't want that answer? Yeah. Okay. One of the things the newspapers all mentioned was Amelia Earhart's uncanny resemblance to whom? You said Tammy Earhart, her sister, who was a bridge champion. <laughs> Did she have a sister? She are had these, a sister. Are these different people? It's Those her. are all the same. <laughs> That's her. It's, all, it's all her, but I, I kept finding photos that she looked kind of different, so I gave you three options. Oh, okay, okay, so I have to pick who she looked like. No, th- this is her. Yeah. This is three different photos of her. You have to pick who that looks like. Yeah, who do you think? But, but she obviously would be the most famous one that looks like this. So if I didn't, if I don't know much about her, how will I know anything about the person she looks I like? Know. It's not like I'm going to go Emma Stone, final answer. It has to be. Someone way back in the fucking 1920s. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, how many women do I know from the 1920s? <laughs> uh, who was the other one? I don't know. The other one what? The other woman in the 1920s. I don't fucking know. You want to tell them the answer, Yeah, Tom? it was Charles Lindbergh. <laughs> oh, I knew there wasn't another one. She was... <laughs> She was uh, nicknamed Lady Lindy because she looks a lot like Fuck Charles guys. Lindbergh. What Charles did he Lindbergh? look like? Yeah, pull him up. Let's see what Charles Lindbergh uh, looks like. Yeah. Uh, what did Lindy look like? Did Lindy was Lindy married? Uh, Charles Lindbergh was married. His baby was famously kidnapped. Lindbergh baby. baby. The Lindbergh baby kidnapping. Was kidnapped. Thirty-two. I yeah. remember that. Because pilots became huge celebrities. They were the astronauts of the twenties. There he is. Same to me. 
And that was the thing I read about yeah. it, and she, it was part of the reason why she was selected. If I mean the the maybe there was a old bloke that they're both their grandfather yeah. back in the day who had highly flying sperm. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Just spreading it around Kansas. America willy nilly like a farmer in a field, and then a couple of Limburg babies came out. Oh, <laughs> that's a great. My one. my sperm's good for deep diving if anyone's interested. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia Earhart endorses and appears in ads for a number of products. One gets her in trouble and stirred controversy. What was it? And you very seriously said sanitary pads. You were very serious well, about this. People one. fucking needed them. Well, I know. But people you know, needed them. You need to know where to buy them. There's probably different brands. You want to have the best answer. one. It was a good answer. It's why you got your your feminist teacher gave you minor points for it, despite Thanks. how terribly wrong it was. Um, she. Uh, it was cigarettes. Uh, yeah. but why did she get in trouble because there was nothing wrong with cigarettes back then see this is this is the thing so I told you this, this first transatlantic flight she's a passenger mm -hmm. right and that's because there was there was a competition who would be the first woman to ride one of these planes across the ocean and there were a lot of people who were trying to be the first one and she was sort of selected in part because she was what they considered the right kind of woman which during the early 1920s meant she didn't drink and she didn't smoke and she was elegant and she was feminine and she wasn't fucking lesbian and she didn't look like a fucking lesbian even though it was a little bit like a oh. <laughs> and they I'm uh, sorry I'm sorry to all the lesbian and so they <laughs> and to they people who her. like lesbians I'm sorry to them as well I, I have a lot of lesbians in my life that I'm very fond of so yeah. I'd like to make an apology love Amelia Earhart because she, she was crafted like the Hunger Games. Like, they, they wanted her to look a certain way, and the, her resemblance to Charles Lindbergh was a huge pro in the He looked like a lesbian, though, right. you got to admit. <laughs> you, you have to, like, when the rubber hits yeah. the road, that yeah. can't look like a fucking lesbian. Yeah, right. But when their girl appeared in a cigarette ad, everyone lost their fucking minds. Cause... I thought it, cigarettes were good. This is the one your doctor says to smoke. I thought it was all that type Only of stuff. Only if you're a certain Oh, you have a was... sore throat? Have I got the cure? Yes, I have. Like that. <laughs> Only for me. I mean, naughty. It was still always naughty girl smoke. Always. Yes, they're the ones you want to meet. Right. I... They're the only reason I ever smoked. <laughs> me too. Girls who smoked were the best. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. When Amelia, now an international celebrity, first flew across the U.S., she discovered a new hazard on America's runways. What was it? You said birds. You were going to say something. That would get I was joking. Today. I just couldn't come up with an answer. Oh, yeah, birds. Nah, I had something. <laughs> it was the general public. People. Uh, they were yes. so they were so entranced. They would run it, the propel towards the propellers. Oh, they'd God. they'd get in the way. They, they they didn't know how long it took for a plane to stop. And then once the plane did stop, they would try to take souvenirs. They they put holes in the wings and they try to take parts of the wheel. And it was like it was like cannibals like running out to the airways. It was scary. Uh, it's because you Americans need more social services. <laughs> 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 If you had more fucking housing and, and, you know, like medicine for all, you know, you wouldn't be tearing wings off like fucking savages. Uh, was she ever married? Yes, she married her public... Because she wasn't a lesbian, everyone. She got married. She married a guy named George P. Putnam, who is one of the biggest publishers in. Give us a picture of Putnam. Give us a picture of Putnam. And George P. Putnam uh, was the manager and publisher for Charles Lindbergh. He was the manager and publisher for Richard Byrd, who was the North Pole explorer. And he knew that the first woman to travel the Atlantic to fly planes would sell a lot of books. Is that Amelia there? No, that's his first no, wife. Right. Okay, oh, so okay. they ran Nothing wrong with her. Yeah. Nothing so, wrong with her. <laughs> he I was read... about to go, Amelia looks good in that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to give her a big compliment and redeem myself. Yeah. That it was George, his first wife. So George P. Putnam, mar his first wife and him are married for 15 years. They have two kids. Yeah. They get divorced. She gets married to another guy like two weeks later. Of course. She's fucking and hot commodity. He proposes, <laughs> he proposes to Amelia Earhart six times in two years. And she says no five times. So no five times. So she was very up and down. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Which was her biography. Wow. Well. <laughs> Uh, uh, where did Amelia Earhart land at the end of her transatlantic solo flight? 
Uh, you said London, and the first people to see her were the king and the queen, the king that stutters. No. Um, so she, after being a passenger... Agree to disagree. In 19, 1928, she was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic as a passenger, and t- you and she agreed that doesn't count. Hmm. And she, didn't, she got a ticker tape parade, and she was a huge celebrity, but she wanted to fly it. And she wanted to fly it alone. So she flies the Atlantic solo in 1932. She's the second human to have done it outside of Charles. Ten, uh, I'll tell you that. Uh, Charles Lindbergh did it. First. Why did she want to do it alone? Um, well, one at the moment, no one had been able to do it with two people because it was too heavy. So if you're doing the math on the kinds of planes that are available and fuel, you can only really afford to take the weight of. But how did she? How was she a passenger then? That was a different kind of plane. Could she not fly that one? Uh, that needed more crew. Uh, yeah. So if she wanted to fly solo, which is what Lindbergh did. She had to take a, a Vega, which is the plane that she takes, and um, painted it yellow. Yeah, yeah, that was a different one. That was the canary. And then she, but she lands, but she does get lost, and she wanted to land in London, so you did get a point there. But she lands in London Derry, which is in Northern Ireland, which they reacted exactly the way you described. No, I, I was, I, I was doing, I was doing Newcastle, England, but I'll take Northern Ireland. Yeah, like, they were. Belfast. The oh my God! There's a plane. Yeah. Big fucking plane. <laughs> It was May, and the the what? They were farmers, and they sat there. They heard it, they saw it, and then it landed. And the farm hands ran out, and then a woman got out, and they panicked. Fucking can't, can't believe this happened on Sunday. <laughs> Bloody Sunday. Okay. No, I'm sorry, man. That was a, a terrible thing. We can't. I'm sorry. I thought that was good. Yeah, it's yeah. an atrocity. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll blame it on you too. Kelly, where were you? <laughs> the transatlantic solo flight was not easy, and she almost didn't make it. What were some of her challenges during the crossing? Jim said she's dyslexic. Is she ever? Is she ever? Her real name is Malia. Yeah, it was it was really sketchy. So ten people had died trying this between Charles Lindbergh and her. And um, nobody had successfully done it solo. And so it, they knew some of the challenges, and it was weather right away. And so it would, took about 20 hours, and she would fly high enough, then all of her gauges broke. So she didn't know her altitude. Mm. Then her gas gauges broke. She didn't know how much fuel she had. So she would just fly up to avoid weather until her uh, uh, instrument started to freeze over. And then she'd get low enough until she saw the waves of the weather. And then she'd go high enough until her gauges started freezing. <laughs> and then a manifold broke, and hot fire fumes started shooting out from the back, and... She got really lost. I mean, it was harrowing. That's, uh, yeah, with, you think of planes now, autopilot, yeah, all none the of technology that, yeah. in the world. And, <laughs> and she had no radio contact with anybody, so she just had to kind of eyeball it, and that was why she ended up in a farmer's field. And so no music to listen to, nothing? No podcasts, no. Yeah. Would it be uh, an audio book? No, not one. <laughs> How did she make most of her money? Was it gardening? No, it was lectures. Oh, yes, and how to be rich. Lectures. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buy a gravel truck for a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she had hey, Pluto, but okay. her tour... Homework for last week. <laughs> I would give Have you, a... you all bought your gravel trucks? <laughs> <laughs> she did a lot. I mean, it, it was her touring schedule was brutal. <laughs> uh, what was she attempting to do when she was lost? Jim said she was texting her husband. <laughs> no, nah, that was mean spirited of me. Uh, <laughs> she was attempting to be the first person, male or female, to fly around the world at the equator. Oh, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, Not nonstop, of course. It's bloody, it's bloody hot, that. Very warm. Yeah, very yeah, hot, yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Muggy. Like at times, yeah. Yeah, you don't even know what season it is. I can save all the time. I've been on the equator. Ha. Yeah. No good. No. Doesn't matter how high you go. You don't, you, don't, you don't want to go too far away from it. You want to stay close to it. Mm. Lovely temperature, close to it. Mm. Don't go too far away, it gets too cold. Okay, I'm going to write this Fuck down. in the middle. <laughs> She would have been. She would have been warm the whole trip. Excellent. All right. How far in her journey was she when she was lost? Jim says 2,100 miles, according to his calculations. No. Well, she started. the The original intention uh, was to go west to east from California to Hawaii, that way around the world, mm. and um, she crashed 
taking off from Hawaii. So she got from California to Hawaii, crashed bad. The plane had to be repaired. A bunch of things changed. And they had to lay low for a couple months. And by the time they got ready to do it again, they went from west to east. So they went from Florida that way around the world. Wait, wait, wait. So, so she went to Hawaii. What happened in yeah. Hawaii? I missed it. She crashed. at. T- so she landed safely in Hawaii. And then waited for the Hawaiians to fix it? it no. It was just how long. You know, you like, That could have been one of the trouble. I reckon right. in Hawaii they didn't have a lot of plane technology at that stage. Well, they didn't. They, they took it to Pearl Harbor. Yeah, but this is before the Second World War. But this it's between the World Wars. No, no, yeah. There, there, there this is, this is 1930. So we already, we already, when Seven. Amelia Earhart was rocking, we already had Pearl Harbor with battleships, with no. fucking planes taking off battleships. No, they, were, they had not yet been bombed, but there was a station there. Yeah, but with planes? Yes, because it was between World Wars. So World War I introduced oh, planes okay. into warfare, and this is in 1937 which is two years before Germany invades Poland. Before that catapults, wasn't it? Right. Right. Um, and so she leaves uh, uh, Burbank, California. Hey! She, that's us! Yay! She lands in Hawaii. The plan is we're going to leave now from... Because that's a long ways to go. Yeah, but fucking beautiful. <laughs> and she has to leave from Hawaii then. The plan is to go to this tiny little island called the Howland Island, which is basically a glorified sandbar in the Pacific. And they had built a runway just for her. Is that gone her. yet? No, it's still there. Ah, then the water level's not rising, is it? <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 if it was fucking, if that thing yeah. existed then and isn't fucking gone, yeah. I'm fucking, I don't care anymore. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm starting. I'm stopped putting effort into anything. I used to be right into the environment. Now you tell me that thing's not fucking gone. It's <laughs> right slightly right more than you saw me a trash can that you loved. Yeah, I like the, that's really a, good. Yeah, you got to check this thing out, that's right? Really <laughs> there's these fucking trash cans that the guy in Australia has invented. That's cleaned up Sydney Harbour. They put the trash cans. This is the invention. One millimetre below the water, so the trash all just scoops in there, and then it rises up. The, the bucket through the way and all the water sifts out and then it collects all the stuff it cleaned up the whole harbour they've just cleaned Marina Del Rey with these trash cans underneath the water the water's never been so fucking clean of junk and fucking mess about 200 years ago or 150 years ago before the invention of the car or whatever there was a man at the patent office wanted to shut the patent office down right because he, and I quote he said he said uh, he said everything that's ever been invented has already been invented. <laughs> There's nothing more we can invent. It's all fucking here, right? And I was starting to think that way about the world. We've got AI technology. We've got all this fucking shit. Everything's been fucking invented. And we missed out on bins slightly below the water. <laughs> we invented that in 2020. Uh, and it was a couple of Australian blokes. Put, put a bin there. Well, that won't catch it. Put it one millimetre below the water. Put holes in it so it all strains out. The stuff gets caught. Great. Fix the fucking harbour. Jack, if you want to see it. And it's better if you see it, I think. Show the fucking bin. Majority of my childhood was always within the water. Fast forward. I just saw a thing on Instagram. (laughs) Show me the Instagram thing. Just show me Instagram post. Fins underwater. It's a controlled environment. It catches everything floating in the water. Plastic bottles, paper, oil, fuel. Cleans the whole surface. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Another good thing with the location of this... It cleans every, every bottle, every bit of shit. You put these bins in, it all just fucking goes away. How the fuck did we miss this? What's that? How come you didn't do ads like this when I was on the No, this is the first thing I've been passionate about in decades. This paid ad. I have gun control and bins under the water. <laughs> Fuck, I love bins under the water. I, I mean, I've, I've only found out today I've been telling everyone. We'll try to get them as a sponsor. They, they sell themselves. <laughs> they don't need to do any fucking advertising. They're bins under fucking water, man. 
<laughs> fucking, that's the invention. Do you know how like they have best inventions, right? In Australia, one time, Australian invention of the year is, you know how we have holes in cans that are this size, right? But in larger cans and beer cans now, we have the holes bigger, like that. In the 80s, we never had that. 90s, we never had that. Early 2000s, we, we made the hole bigger. <laughs> And that was an Australian invention of the year. <laughs> right? no, no bullshit. Guy goes into his boss, beer factory. I want to talk to you. I'm a busy man. You can't just barge in here, but I have something you need to hear. What, what, what are you going to tell me? You know the holes in the cans? There are no holes in the cans. The liquid just fall out. We don't put holes in the cans. You know how we make the hole? Oh, the drinky hole. Yes, I am following. What about the drinky hole? Make it a little bit bigger. Uh, drinky hole. <laughs> People would drink more. We'd sell more. Um, we'll give it a go. We got, we got to get back to Millie Earhart. Right, uh, oh, is that still going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, there's, there's four questions left. We're almost there. Um, so she was lost. 21, where did she were saying? Yeah. She, she was lost on her way to this Howland Island, this tiny little uh, basic That's where sandbar. She that was where, on her way there. Yeah, that was where she vanished. What if the so bins she, find she her wants, body? But I was, <laughs> but, uh, the bins. Like, what if that's what solves uh, this fucking mystery? <laughs> what if those fucking yeah. bins just, <laughs> just fucking have her hand with her fucking wedding ring on it? There's no fucking debate. That's Amelia all fucking day. Yeah. She was, to be fair, uh, more than three quarters of the way around the world because after she grabbed the whole thing she had to change her plans she went the other way and she got all the way back from from Florida to Papua New Guinea and she was supposed to where land. all the best aeroplane engineers mm. were living at the time yes, <laughs> yes. And she had if to you land. break down in Papua New Guinea there was a bloke there to fix it I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> And it was the same place she was heading to this Howland Island, the same place she was heading the first time she tried. So she was very nearly done with her circumnavigation. Is that the answer to the next question? What was unusual and difficult oh, about it? the Howland it? Island that yeah, she was trying times. to land on this tiny... It was, it was basically a mile and a half wide. It was so small that even on a clear day it could oh, look like the shadow we of that's a cloud. What we were yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, why is that not underwater? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiny and you were like, fuck it. You were like, fuck it. And then you were like, back in with like, the bits. How did I go there? All yeah. oh, right, I'm back here. That should be underwater. Um, so Amelia Earhart was not alone in her plane when it vanished. Who was with her? Jim said, hearts and minds. There's children everywhere at Rock Hudson. <laughs> no. She was not going alone. Baby Rock Hudson, though. Yeah, right now. He was just a baby. Baby Rock and He was like, I don't know who he was. <laughs> Still very handsome. Uh, she had a navigator named Fred Noonan. And he was with her, and he was a uh, drunk. He was a dangerous, scary drunk. And where um, was he getting his alcohol from? Um, Air where, Stewardess? Wherever they landed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they should, they, they should have cut him off. <laughs> they crashed the first time. They crashed. They had like three months before they got the band back together to try again. And he had gotten married and divorced <laughs> in the meantime, and was just a. Of wreck. course he is. He's a flying drunk. She was a mess. <laughs> yeah. So she had a guy named Fred Noonan. He was, was just sitting at the front with the Millie Earhart with those little tiny vodka bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, last question. A popular conspiracy theory suggested that Amelia Earhart didn't die, but was captured by the Japanese. Who was the first to suggest this theory? Jim said the Chinese. Not just one Chinese. <laughs> all, of them. all Chinese. It was actually the U.S. government through a propaganda film in 1943 called Flight to Freedom. And it was a, a movie about a fictional female pl pilot who disappears in the Pacific attempting a circumnavigational tour of the world. And that she had to come up with this cover story that she was trying to do this circumnavigation of the globe so that she could crash into Japanese territory and be this high covert spy. And the reason people, and the movie suggested this because she was really good friends with Eleanor Roosevelt. And she what, had sorry, asked... Sorry, were, were we not getting along with Japanese people then? Was that a bad... 
Correct. I mean, no good. We're so yeah. Was so, it just the Second World War? Is a bit before we went. What, what were we upset about then? We had a hunch mm. where the lines were being drawn by then. This is 1937. So Germany invades Poland in 1939. Pearl Harbor is bombed in 1941. The U.S. gets involved in 1942, and this is 1937. So right. So we're shit's already cooking. there's already. Shit's cooking. Already people walking around this country going, I'm not trying yeah. fucking raw fish. And FDR, right? And, and one of the theories... Right. Yeah, that's yeah. what it would have been like. That's what those fucking people do, I tell you. Yeah. What about ramen? Ramen. No, we call that a noodle bowl. <laughs> um, all right, this is a part of our show called Dinner Party Facts. We ask our expert to give us a... Wait a fact. minute, how did she die? What do you mean? How did she die? <laughs> did anyone really she figure crashed. it out? Yeah, she crashed. She disappeared. Anyone... So she's the the folks are waiting for her on Howland Island. They're they're waiting. They know she's left what's, New Guinea and they're well, waiting. How do, you, how do you think she died? Was it her controls? Was it the the drunk guy going whoa, <laughs> whoa on the stick like this? Yeah. Fuck off, will ya? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> So she had a number of communication devices on board, one of which required a 250-foot antenna cable that you had to manually oh. unroll. She ran out of cable. Work. And she likely maybe lost that when the first crash. Like there, There's some confusion about what kind of communication devices she actually had on board and what was working. But there were ships uh, stationed outside of Howland Island, and their whole job was to ping Amelia and to try to help her because this was going to be a difficult deal and they would pick her up and they'd hear her occasionally but she couldn't hear them and they knew she couldn't hear them because they weren't responding and they didn't have her long enough to get a location she would get fainter meaning she was getting further away and then she'd get clearer meaning they were closer but she would say I can't see you and they were like we can't see you and no one knew why and the, one of the ideas is this island was so small it looked like a shadow and um, one they, of Cliff Richards band yeah, that was what they said too. <laughs> and um, <laughs> someone they... just said Epstein Island. <laughs> I, she was too I think, old. I think we've just solved that mystery. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was 39. She never would have been allowed. Um, <laughs> yeah. She might have been like that lady bringing them there, though. <laughs> Maybe. She could have. She could have yeah. worked for Jeffrey. Let's yeah. start that rumor. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but the theory, the theory they don't know, and they, they did one of the largest searches in, in history looking for, and they never found a trace. So, so technically, we still don't know where she went, which is where conspiracy theories have room. Now, I don't know, some of you guys know recently, this year, there was a sonar company, brand new sonar, that has found uh, a plane underwater that is the shape of, of her, the plane that was lost is about 100 miles Right, off so that would be the two Island. wing in the middle bit <laughs> shape. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah. just, that was one of a kind, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but I do have, I have, I have a dinner party fact, and then I have a little thing, just because I was here for Titanic last time, I yeah. wanted to, to highlight that Amelia Earhart's first transatlantic flight was only 16 years after Titanic sank. And the reason that's significant is because the Titanic was the fastest thing across the Atlantic. It took six days. And this is 16 years later, Imagine and we if, got flights that can do it in 20 hours. Imagine if where she crashed was into the Titanic. What? <laughs> no, was totally, that was the North Atlantic. But that's not my dinner party bet. <laughs> You're not good at geography, are you? No. It's not, it's not even close. I'm, I've traveled the world yeah. North Atlantic, yeah. South Pacific was I mostly watch episodes of The Office right there. <laughs> no, I'm really excited about the dinner party fact. Because, well, say it, yeah. Okay, so when Amelia was planning her solo transatlantic flight, similar to the first one, it was like competition, and everyone's trying to figure out who's going to do it first, and what kind of plane, and how they have to augment the plane to even make it possible, and all this stuff. And one of the guys working in Burbank, in top secret, on Amelia Earhart's plane, is a guy named Edwin Aldrin, who is Buzz Aldrin's dad. Yeah. And what's nuts about that is that he was in charge of her fuel distribution. So Buzz Aldrin's dad took Amelia Earhart's plane up dozens of times with sandbags to do the math on the fuel, and then he'd throw the sandbags out to determine once fuel had burned how, how it would go. 
And this was in 1932. And his son walks on the moon in no, 1969, which open. means Buzz No one who can really <laughs> prove that. Theoretically. <laughs> right, so let's not say anything that we're going to Our moon landing, exer- no, our moon landing no. experts over right. there. Well, ha- why is this table not rolling off? <laughs> Why is Definitely. it just staying flat like this? Why aren't we all fucking whoa? Because it's, it's fucking flat, and you know it is. Well, Good point. Good point. That's true. I stand corrected. I'm so embarrassed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what the, but Buzz Aldrin's dad, Edwin Aldrin, was fucking if alive. If he existed. For 1966, he saw he he worked on Amelia Earhart's plane, right? And in 1966, he saw his son spacewalk, and in 1969, he saw his son walk on the moon. I think that's really fucking wow. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So he must have known Kubrick very well, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> what year did Buzz punch that guy? That's one of my favorite videos. Oh, right. no, right. I mean, let's finish. That video, let's Google. finish up with the podcast with Buzz Aldrin punching a guy. <laughs> yeah. You know the video, right? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's one of my favourite things. Uh, yeah. I, I, this will be the first time I've watched it without my dick out. <laughs> <laughs> prove it! Prove it! Prove it! Uh, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's because it's he's fucking the toughest cunt in the fucking yeah. room. And this guy comes up to him. The guy who comes up to him, he's saying the moon landing didn't happen, the moon landing didn't happen, the moon landing didn't happen. He's just trying to get on with his fucking day. And then Buzz just clocks the cunt. Why don't you swear in the Bible that you walked on the moon? Swear in the Bible. Why don't you swear in the Bible that you walked on the moon? Really like it. Wait a minute. I don't remember this bit. You walked the yeah, is this the video? <laughs> Call the kettle black if you ever thought of saying yeah, yeah, you're it. Get away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. Yeah. 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 It was when he called yeah. the coward. When he said he was a coward. You're a coward and a liar. And he's like, he fucking put up with that cunt the whole fucking time. And it doesn't matter that that guy was right. He There's still deserved to be punched. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the podcast. We're no, that's not the end of it. That's just the thing for next time. So yeah, sorry, that was just an ad. <laughs> what was that? I don't know what the ad started It's just the ad after the punch. <laughs> what were we advertising for free then? <laughs> we should ring them up, get a few shekels. I think so. Just a few shekels. Are we doing the ad or no? We should finish first and we'll do the ad after. Okay. Um, yeah, well, thank you for being here, Don Brody. Everybody give it up for Don Brody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Thanks for having me. You're always Please. a joy to have yeah, on, Don. Always, always a joy. Yeah, Don is great. Please listen to our podcast. Subscribe to it. Health, history, I'd love. I'd like to fuck. And, mm, uh, bit sordid. Don't like that type of talk. But... <laughs> but very Instagram, Don underscore Brody and, and health podcast as well. Follow that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, give uh, Forrest, Dawn, and I want to say Jack a round of applause, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm going to read an ad now. Let's no, do no, ads. No, no, no. That's not how you end the podcast. I want to do an ad. We, we've done like a. Oh, this bit. Party. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you're ever at a party and someone walks up to you and says, Is that Amelia Earhart? She fucking uh, she poor. didn't she didn't crash. She was poor. <laughs> and go well. I don't know about that. And walk away. <laughs> Good night, Australia. Yeah. Yeah.